In the early 1900s, traveling by ship was all the rage. White Star Line was one of the most prominent and luxurious shipping lines of the time, catering to the rich and famous. With a reputation like that, you'd probably expect that their ships wouldn't, you know, sink. Well, I guess popularity doesn't guarantee smooth sailing. Violet Constance Jessup learned that lesson the hard way. She survived three disasters on three different ships, but all belonging to White Star Line. So who was this lucky, or perhaps unlucky, lady? And what could have possibly put her in such similar catastrophes time after time? Violet Jessup was born in Argentina, the oldest of six siblings in an Irish immigrant family. When she was just 16, they lost their father, so their mother decided to move the family back to Great Britain, where she found work as a ship stewardess. Unfortunately, her mother fell ill a few years later and couldn't work anymore, so it was up to Violet to provide for her family. She dropped out of school to look for a job, and following in her mom's footsteps, was soon employed as an ocean liner stewardess with the Royal Mail Line. This was actually unusual for a woman her age at that time, since stewardesses back then were generally older and more mature-looking. So at her 21 years of age, she purposely wore dated clothes designed for more mature women, just so she could look older. She also stayed clear of wearing makeup to help her show any fine lines on her face. It's not often you hear of a woman trying to dress and look older than she really is. But I get it. It helped land her a job she urgently needed. A few years later, in 1911, she started working aboard White Star Line's RMS Olympic, which at the time was the largest of all passenger ships. This is where Jessup experienced her first ship disaster. As they were leaving the harbor, a British warship accidentally crashed into the Olympic, leaving it with two massive holes in the hull. Fortunately, the ship hadn't gone too far yet and managed to get back safely without ending up at the bottom of the sea. Nobody was hurt during this mishap. Also, during that time, a new ship was being built, and it was the talk around town. It was said to be the Titan of the Sea, the ultimate unsinkable ship. That's right, I'm talking about Titanic. Violet Jessup was really enjoying her job on board the Olympic and had no intentions of going anywhere else. But everyone kept telling her to apply for a transfer to the headline-making sister ship. They all thought it would be the coolest ship to work on. She eventually caved in to the peer pressure and sent in her application. Once on board the Titanic, she did find herself liking the improved servants' quarters and was happy to still be working with all of her friends. As we all know by now, this ship was not as lucky as the Olympic, and with almost cruel irony, it certainly didn't live up to its nickname. The great unsinkable Titanic sunk on its maiden voyage on April 14, 1912, after crashing into an iceberg. Jessup was in her cabin when the collision happened. She was immediately called to go and help up on deck, guiding women and children to the lifeboats. Eventually, she was put on one of those boats and was handed a baby to take care of. In the freezing cold of the North Atlantic air, they waited a grueling eight hours for help. The ship Carpathia ended up coming to the rescue. As Jessup recalled, after everyone was safely on board, a woman rushed over and grabbed the baby out of her arms and ran away without saying a word. Yeah, she thought it was strange too, but she figured the frantic woman must have been the baby's mother. So, recap. She's already survived two consecutive ship crashes at this point. One in 1911, and the other a year later in 1912. Now, fast forward a few years to 1916. Jessup was then serving as a nurse for the British Red Cross. She was posted on yet another sister ship to the Titanic and owned by White Star Line, HMHS Britannic. This ship's designers had learned from the mistakes of the previous two White Star Line disasters 
and built this one to be the safest of the three. One of the biggest adjustments was that it had way more lifeboats on board. In fact, this ship had enough lifeboats to carry 3,600 people, which was much more than the maximum amount of passengers it could hold. Compare that to the Titanic, which had a tragic shortage, an oversight that would end up costing more people their lives. Anyway, the Britannic had been converted into a hospital ship to help bring wounded soldiers back home. And as fate would so cruelly have it yet again, Jessup found herself in a third ship disaster within a span of five years. This time, however, it wasn't due to faulty design or bad planning. It was an unexpected explosion that caused it to sink into the Aegean Sea. It's theorized they either ran into an underwater mine or were hit by a torpedo. To this day, no one really knows what caused the explosion that sank the Britannic. Thankfully, most of the passengers and crew survived. Although Jessup was among the lucky ones, she did receive a pretty serious head injury while trying to escape in a lifeboat that was being sucked under by the force of the sinking vessel. Some years later, after suffering from constant painful headaches, she finally decided to go to the doctor and found out that she'd actually fractured her skull. Do you think this woman was doomed with bad luck? Or do you think it was good luck that carried her through bad times? Perhaps it was a little of both. Or that she was just a resilient survivor. Even at a young age, Jessup made it through an unlikely circumstance. When she was a little girl, she got really sick, and the doctors didn't think she'd make it through the next few months. Well, she obviously did, and would even outlive all her younger siblings in the end. Maybe her rough early years gave her the grit she needed to make it through all those other tough experiences she'd have later in life. I guess we can only speculate. Jessup was unique in other ways, too. When she turned 36, she finally decided to get married. Her groom, 46-year-old John James Lewis, was supposedly a ship steward according to the records. The wedding took place on October 29, 1923. It was a Monday, and probably a grey one at that if we're talking fall in London. If you're the superstitious type, then you might not be surprised to find out that the marriage didn't last very long at all. Jessup never did have any children, which was pretty rare in an age when a child-free lifestyle wasn't really accepted. Well, in any case, Jessup just put all her time and energy into her job. She really must have loved what she did for a living since, despite everything she'd been through, she continued to work as a ship stewardess for over 40 years. She even worked on a cruise line that took her around the world twice. Luckily, she never encountered another disaster at sea again after the Britannic. Three times must have been enough. Miss Unsingable, as she was dubbed, eventually retired to a cute little cottage in the English countryside that she decorated with trinkets she'd collected during her four decades of work and adventure. And get this, Violet recalled a strange day when a woman rang her up claiming to be the little baby that the stewardess had saved from the Titanic so many years prior. But the mysterious caller hung up before any conversation got started. Some people think this was just a prank call, but Jessup swore that she never told anyone about the baby she'd rescued so long ago. Now, that's pretty wild. Passing at the age of 83 in 1971, I think one can say that Violet Jessup lived a full and happy life, giving her so many amazing tales to tell the world. Boy, would it have been cool to sit down and have a chat with this incredible woman. So, do you know about other ordinary people who ended up having extraordinary lives? Let me know down in the comments. If you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share it with a friend. But hey, don't go anywhere just yet. We have over 2,000 cool videos for you to check out. All you have to do is pick the left or right video, click on it, and enjoy. Stay on the bright side of life.